Let's learn German today. It's our first German polyglot show, and uh, we'll see what we can learn today. Uh, what we're going to do is set things up for the regular show, but we usually always get started on a few words here and there. So let's see what we can do. Join us, won't you? We may talk about music too. Welcome back. German music and of course the uh, Lutheran, uh, Martin Luther Bible, Bible, first German language Bible. All today on the Polyglot Show, German, making safe dirty. Alrighty, let's get going. Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll get started today's show. It's amazing, really. Um, as you've been watching all week long, we've been keeping track of our polyglot shows, for example. We've been doing po pretty much, we had our second Mandarin class, uh, well, I won't call them classes, but show. Uh, we had it, I believe, this week. Um, we did our first Italian show this week. And um, and we did our first Russian show this week. We couldn't get the Portuguese in last night, scheduling. And over and right now I'm starting one hour late, really, for this. Usually it should be at six, but it's a tight time. And depending on you know what the needs of the family are, I had to pick up my son from work, uh, so. And tra it is uh, traffic-wise, and one that we went to the store to pick up some things for the home and for tomorrow and whatnot. So, yeah, you know, I, I can't set a, a, a set hour because, really, there's no set hours here. But in any case, uh, yeah, at least we can keep trying to do, get things done. So, um, as usual, we have to really set things up for the class um, I call it a class, sorry, that's not a habit from my Arithmetic University classes. Uh, it's actually just a show. We're not trying to be a formal teaching class here or anything. We're just learning for ourselves, expanding our knowledge and sharing that uh, with you all, giving you all a chance to do the same thing just for fun. Or, uh, you know, obviously, if you want to do something professional, you can get professional help. Uh, but there's no nothing to say. You can't expand your mind, you know, and we can't do it together. It's a good thing, a uh, good thing to counteract any Alzheimer and all that stuff, and and try to do something to fight against that uh, dementia. A lot of people will suffer that and ha and are suffering that. And uh, we have a therapy program uh, with the Mathemata University. One of the things that we try to do as leads is to expand uh, the brain power a little bit and try to counteract some lost neurons here and there by adding new ones. So this is one of the things that you really should be doing at every age, but especially if you're aging, um, you should just try to learn new things. And uh, so I hope the Polyglot Show will be something you guys pick up and do for yourselves and along with me and just use it as a catalyst to proceed on and just make some new neurons. It, everyone can use a few. It's free. <laughs> so let's get with it here. Okay, and of course your kids, your kids can pick up languages so easily and whatnot. It's a great thing for them and increases their income in life, by the way. The more languages they know, the more income they are liable, to, uh, they are able to make. Uh, and most uh, uh, people, you know, they, they can pick up another language. It's pretty much easy, but uh, doing two, three, more money and more options open to them. 
you got to understand that. Uh, people can make some great money in other countries uh, who can speak the language there, and they know English, and so there's just great money in, in having that facility, that skill. So again, listen, uh, expose your kids. Give them opportunities. Uh, otherwise, they will be locked down, really, for most of their lives if they don't get that opportunity. Okay, so let's look into... Uh, what we're going to do exactly, uh, uh, let's see what resources we can get. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare this browser for our perusal. And um, let's get on, head on over there. And see what we can glean get going with right now so uh, again like you like you all know I, I, I have a few areas of interest usually with most of these languages first of all we're going to look for um, English words uh, that are German and uh, so we'll look at the um, 78 intriguing English words derived from German uh, by flu we might as well do that so that's one page we can look at today another thing we look for are um, uh, let's see uh, since we do, I want to see um, some, see if I can get anything like that. What royalty free Bach uh, recordings. I just want to see if there's anything out there. Public domain, they have some of the public domain classical recordings. Uh, let's see what they have there. I'm looking for recordings of classical music that are in the public domain. One fairly useful source I found was at mooseopen.org. Any others? Anyone's aware? Lots of stuff on the baroquemusic.org. There's also a similar one for harpsichord music that I can't find at the moment. And another site that has free music, presumably, public, they have some language about it being Creative Commons, is Classic Cat, uh, which will open in a new tab. And they have Bach here, Johann Sebastian, so we'll just click on him. And so they got uh, a lot of his music in here. Um, and so we'll just look at that. Uh, we're just going to look at like the titles for today. We're not going to play Bach music yeah, today. Maybe not. Maybe I'm sneaking in. I'm just so tempted with it. Uh, so, but in any case, we'll just have it as a resource. Um, for our uh, uh, perusal of today, that seems like it was a good place to go. I won't try any of these others right now, but in any case, uh, let's see what else. Um, um, I'm trying to think about uh, the other day what other sites uh, and things we looked for. I, I, what we'll do, we'll just start with these. Okay. And uh, first of all, we always give credit to the sites that we do use. So let's give them a plug. We're in fluentu.com, the blog section, German, English words derived from German. And these are not necessarily German words playing German words that we use in English. It's just that words that we use that come from German derivation. Okay, I expect to see a few things here, and if I don't see it, well, then the listing is not really good. 
But in any case, we'll go through it. So, um, uh, and they are attributing that fact to the number of immigrants that crossed the Atlantic and settled in the States, 50s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, and so the, the influence of their language uh, slowly crept into English usage. Um, and so um, that's basically what they're uh, saying. German-derived Eng English words are amazing. They're fun to say, pop up in various cultural references, like movies, TV shows, and songs. They even assist you in gaining fluency in German. So, hey, we're on the right track. The one thing I like about what I'm doing, the way that I'm doing it, is that it's right on, it's spot on. And the way that we're doing these uh, languages is that we're just simply using familiarity and, and basically my own familiarity with certain areas of knowledge and also passion. I, I always tell people to, you know, expand your passions and, and your mind by uh, adding, you know, looking into other languages. And since you know this or that, or you love this or that, then it'd be easier for you to gain some type of a foothold in a, a new language by using what you love. I use the same tactic with learning software. Software coding is another language as well. And what I do is that I only code software that I need, that I need. So and basically, every time I'm doing some project or some work, and I say, let me try to do this in the software I started, and let me just add on to it to accommodate what I need right now. And so that's basically how I slowly build software until it's all done, you know. So that's what I do. It's a little trick. So I don't. I rarely sit down. I can't. Do, I used to, but I can't do it anymore for certain reasons. We won't bother you with it now. But uh, I used to sit down, just sit, uh, you know, just design a software from beginning to end and just put work on and put it together. But uh, I can't do that any longer. So what I do is basically just bump and trod my way through projects as I need, as the need arises. And slowly come out to something. It's not optimal, but again, it's the only thing I'm left with right now. So let's look at um, some of these words. 76 intriguing English words derived from German. And then we'll see this word. This word is absiel. Absel. Now I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that right. So I'm. I am going. Oh, I see. The, the other thing we need to do is uh, go to the English translator. Let me see how this does for us. I'm going to have to put on the mic on that. Absel. Absel means to descend a rock face or other near vertical surface by using a doubled rope coiled around the body and fixed at a higher point. Now, I've always referred to that as repelling, but this, I was, this is the term, I guess the proper term, or the, uh, at least the German-derived ger, ger, German uh, term, absale, absale. Okay, so that's ansatz. Ansatz. Ansatz is similar to a hypothesis that is used in math and science in reference to making an educated guess that will later be tested and verified. In German has more literal meaning about the initial placement of a tool for work purposes. Ansatz, again. Yeah. We'll give this a listen to us in German. Ansatz means, uh, or our English meaning for it, it's as approach. It's the way you, you prepare to do something. It's approach, the beginning, and an attempt. It's ansatz. Ansatz. Now, this is words that uh, we normally don't use. 
but these words are available. So another good um, ish, another good benefit is that we're learning new English words, right? Words that are used in English, although I guess not by many in many of you of your circles. But these are English words you can use and probably get away with in uh, Scrabble, right? <laughs> uh, that would be good to see. Let's see. Let's see if Anne Sats is a Scrabble word. Just curious. Scrabble words. And the Scrabble word finder will go there. And we'll put ansatz there. Well, we copied it already. Let's see if that's a word. This looks for other words. It doesn't tell us if that is indeed a word. Let's find if it is a word or not. Ansatz is a simple... Let's see if this is a word. It's not giving us uh, what I wanted. What I intended was to uh, uh, Scrabble Dictionary, I guess. We need to put a Scrabble Dictionary. So, yeah, let's go over there. This is the Hasbro tools. And let's put it in the official dictionary. Paste. Go. Congratulations. This is an official Scrabble word. See? So there you go. But, and then other English words that I know are English words, Scrabble doesn't accept it. <laughs> so there you go. But the German word they take, isn't that kind of unfair? <laughs> totally unfair, guys. <clears throat> totally unfair, let me tell you right now. So there you go, ansatz. Go look at it. Look at it. Use it in your next Scrabble game. I'll use it against my wife in our next Scrabble game. That's for sure. We play that quite often. All right. So, yeah. Hey. Ansatz. Absale, ansatz. Uh, let, me, let me get the uh, pronunciation. I gotta make that louder because I gotta hear that. Anzats. 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 So at the Anzats of our show, we're doing pretty well. We're learning something. Anzats is the beginning, it's the approach. Autobahn. Autobahn, we know that's the uh, highway, right? The word Autobahn has transferred to the English language to mean a mere expressway. Many tourist attractions use this name, such as the Autobahn Indoor Speedway in Alabama. So uh, we're adopting the German words here in the U.S. Autobahn. Autobahn. Anschluss. Ansch Anschluss. Although this word means connection, it comes from the forced integration of Austria with Nazi Germany. Now, we still need to see what this is about, so um, let's try to get this in the, the translator. Let me just try this to see if the translator shows up. It did. It's called a connection. Anschluss. 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 I feel like Schultz here, right? From Hogan's Heroes. You ever seen that? Anschluss. 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 I'm putting in a T there. It doesn't belong. Anschluss. 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 It's a connection and port. Okay, Anschluss. Oh my goodness. 
automat. This is one is fairly simple since it refers to a machine. It takes money and serves food or drink. Typically at fast food restaurants, it's not a, that common of a word anymore, but we still see vending machines, which are a form of automat. 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 Achtung! Achtung! That I remember for the German war movies. That means attention. Achtung! The word means attention, yet we've seen in several cultural references such as the U2 album, Achtung, baby. Um, I'd like to hear that pronounced, uh, I guess, more authentically than I'm doing it. So let's see. Achtung. 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 So it's kind of like you're swallowing that last part. Achtung. 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 Caution. Alert. Attention. Pay attention. Achtung. I keep wanting to do that, that strong accent. Achtung. 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 What, how do you say when you're angry? They should have a button for that. I'm angry. I'm pissed off. Achtung! Achtung! Schlager, schlager! Ukrava! Achtung! Whatever. <laughs> okay, Achtung. All right, ever. Angst. Now, if you if you're not if you're not noticing it yet, you'll notice that you should be noticing that German is very rough. Not as rough, I think, as Jap Japanese. Japanese are very <laughs> they're very very uh, I guess macho uh, with the way they enunciate their words, but it still is a very strong rough. Rough uh, composition in in the language. Angst. The word angst implies a feeling of anxiety or depression in the English language. Let's hear it with the expression. Uh, however, they got these expressive sounding uh, uh, voicing, right? In Google, not bad. Angst. 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 Angst, and the English meaning is angst. Angst, same thing. See, <laughs> alrighty. Angst. Blitz. We heard these also. World War Two uh, movies. The uh, Blitz Krieg. Uh, it's a blitz means pretty much a very quick advance or something like that, a very overwhelming one. It says blitz is an interesting word because in English it technically means lightning. But I don't know anyone who says blitz when they see a lightning storm. In German, it is only used literally, lightning war, such as the rapid military ground attacks called blitzkrieg. In well, in World War Two. So yeah, that's why I remember it from. Um, I, I guess English is, it means lightning fast. I mean, it says blitz, and what's the creek? What does creek mean? So I'll look at that. I like to break up words and look at their meaning, and we'll see if creek has a meaning. We we'll put it here. Creek, and it means war, lightning war. So. Blitz does mean lightning. So even though in German you don't hear them say blitz for lightning, there may be other words for it. But blitz means lightning, even in German, and when it's put together with the war thing. So it's a lightning war, it's a blitzkrieg. But krieg is war. Krieg, Blitz, Krieg, Blitz, Krieg, Blitz, 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 
creek? Which creek? Okay. Blitz creek. Bildungsroman. Both in German and English, a Bildungsroman is a coming of age story. <laughs> oh, it gets so touching now, doesn't it? Uh, let's hear some pronunciation of that. Paste. I, I'm really surprised at what we're finding. I don't think they're doing that one right. I don't think they're doing that one right. Bildens Roman. Doesn't sound right, so we'll discard that for now until we find some authentic German speakers out there to make that right. Um, a bagel. Many English speaking people use this word every morning, and this tasty bread food actually comes from Poland. But Germ Germans also call them bagels or, 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 or bagels. Like bagels. So um, let's hear that. Let's hear it in this rendering here, which probably will produce a better sound. Bagels, 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 bagels. So it's like bagels. Oh, don't you love them bagels? Would you like a bagels? Bagels, Blitzkrieg bagels. Okay, bratwurst. Also, I guess I don't think that's is that German. As one of the most popular sausages in Germany, English-speaking folks enjoy grilling and talking about these as well. And uh, so that's bratwurst. And I'm going to say that, let's say, in German, it would be bratwurst. Bratwurst. That's my, my guess. Bratwurst. Bratwurst. Let's see. Oh, man, I haven't eaten dinner yet. I'm going to have that right after this show. Bratwurst. Ah, not bad. Ah, you just need that more of the ear. Uh, Bradburst. 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 Like that. The. The. Bradburst. Huh? Bradburst. Bradburst. Would you like some Bradburst? Some Bradburst. Bratwurst. 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 It's like a burst. Bratwurst. 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 Would you like some bratwurst? Bratwurst. 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 You have to actually change your face around for this stuff. Bratwurst. Bradverse, you understand what I'm saying? Hey, capiche italiano, no way, uh, dirt, speak and see dirt. Okay. Bretzel, a rather popular sandwich shop in the U.S. is called Hannah's Bretzel. And the world is preferring, referring to a pretzel, no kidding. It can either be a hard or soft pretzel. A bretzel. You have to you have to say it with that German you know that German feeling and that accent there. Let's see. Bretzel. Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> I'm working it all up. It's going to have this accent, and it's just bretzel. It's simple. 
Simple rosado bretzel, okay, bro? You don't have to work yourself over for it. Just bretzel, simple. Hey, bro, it's not, this is German. It's not no foreign language. It's really just German. Karabina. The word karabina is a spring hook safety system used on German rifles. In English-speaking countries, the word karabiner derived from that, but it's mainly talking about the metal safety look. So, again... The word, let's go, the, the German word, because the German is what we're here to learn, not just the English uh, version of it. So let's hear how it's done in German the right way for all you gun owners out there. And you see what they have here? They call it also the same thing for these uh, loops that you guys use for your bungee jumping and stuff like that, the straps when you're, when you're abseil from the mountaintop also. Right? We use the German, you see that? Abseil. Oh. Karabina hake. I knew it was like that. Karabina hake. Karabina hake. Carabina hacking. Well, I just love that hacking in the back, right? This is the, the intriguing thing about the Germans. Like that, that's what I'm saying. It's like you know, I don't know to, how to explain it. That hacking, carabina hacking. Okay, you know that Germany is just just wonderful, isn't it? Carabina hacking. You know, it's like yeah, that's German. Got, there's certain things you gotta say in German. Okay, they ca carry more character. In German than in English. The carabiner, yeah, what the heck, a carabiner? This is the carabiner hawking, okay? It's a hawking. Carabiner hawking. Uh, do I speak in sea dirge? Carabiner hawking. Speak in sea dirge. Speak in dirge, you dummy. Gotta find that in German. You dummy hawking. Dumb hawking. Dumb founder hawking. In, in stupid and hawking strobe, stupid hawking, double hawking, carabin hawking, you dope and hawking. Huh? It's just the German. It's the German. It's, like, it's priceless. <laughs> you just have some fun with it. After all, 76 words. Yeah, this is cobalt. Uh, it's an element, and the coal is found in the earth crust, and uh, I guess they're going to say cobalt. 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 Because, you know, we do that in Germany. Cobalt. Okay, Karabenhaken. Cobalt. Cobalt. Karabenhaken. Cobalt. Cobalt, eh, cobalt, and ka Karina Hawken. People look at these guys going and look mad. Kringle, a eh, kringle is an area of the boat in which you pass a rope. Haha, <laughs> there's a name for that. It's called a kringle. Let's <clears throat> see that in German. Oh, I see, see, they put it as, as English, because of course it's, it's, it is in English, but it's derived from the German. Come on, come on, let's get the German, Kringel. Kringel. Ah, Kringel. 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 A uh, Karina Hakim. Ka ka Karabin and Hakim. Kowalt. Karingal. Delicatessen, guys. Look at that. You may know this as a word deli, and you will still find many shops that would have the word delicatessen plastered on the sign. It refers to a place that sells delicacy, delicatessa, like cheeses and meats. Let's hear that with the German intonation. Uh, 
and hear that. Delicatessen. Delicatessen. It's very similar. So you guys at least should learn delicatessen. It's a simple delicatessen. When next time you go to the deli or say I'm going to the deli, I'm going to the delicatessen, you're already speaking German. That's it. You, you're a German speaker. I'm sorry, I have to speak German today. I'm going to the delicatessen. That's it. You're speaking German. I speak in Dutch. Speak in Dutch. Okay? And just because I'm using it a lot, and you guys are wondering, why is he always saying Deutsch? Uh, Deutsch is German for German. They don't say German in German. They say Deutsch. 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 Okay, even more so. I see, you see the difference between the way uh, an American would say Deutsch and the way they say it? Look at that. It's Dutch. It's not Dutch. It's Dutch. Uh huh. again. It's Dutch. Dutch. Speaking say Dutch. Speaking say Dutch. 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 Speaking say Dutch. Puerto Ricans out there. Speak and see Dutch. Actung! <laughs> Doppelganger has gained much traction in pop culture, used quite a bit in How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> and it means when you see someone who looks exactly like someone you know. It's often used in literature and refers to a supernatural phenomenon where the person looks like they have been duplicated. And man, and I have been duplicated, but my duplication is like within myself, so I'm bigger than usual. That's that's the reason. That's the reason I'm big and fat. So I'm I'm an internal doppelganger. It's called doppelganger. That's it. That's my excuse. All right. But anyway, let's look at Let's look at what how this sounds. Doppelganger. Uh, Doppelganger. Doppelganger. It's a doppel doppelganger. Doppelganger. And it's almost like they're dropping that last G. Doppelganger. Doppelganger. Dashund. That U. They know that U is profound. Dashund. Dashund. Uh, the word hund, hund is like hound, right? Uh, it's hund. In German means dog. Pair that with docks, and you get a badger dog, which simply means a breed of dog with a long body and short legs in English. So it's dog, dog hund. So it's like hound. Remember, that's that. You don't have to get that hound sound. Sure of it. Very sure. Da, Doc's hound. Doc's hound. Let's hear that. <laughs> yeah, because their U is very strong, right? But yet it's still like it's like oh, you, you okay, I have to pronounce it back here. Das hund. Doc's hund. See that? It's like, you know, hey, I'm speaking from in here. Dachshund. Dachshund. <laughs> Can you believe somebody answering homework questions or in the classroom answering questions? Oh, yeah, teacher, yeah, I know that dog. It's a dachshund. Say <laughs> so, hey, boys and girls. 
Dachshund. Dachshund. It's like Jackson. Jackson. Dachshund. 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 So how are you doing? Speaking see dirt. Oh, man. I, I can't wait to use Dachshund in some strange way. In any time, because I don't refer to dogs in any sense of way, but hey, dogs hold. I want to be able to say that to somebody. Oh man, now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be just like anxious every day, waiting for that precise moment when I'm able to say dogs hold, and uh, you know, and it fits. I can't hold my breath for that, especially here in Florida. <laughs> so dogs hold. What the hell are you from? Edelweiss. Edelweiss. I'm sure that's going to be made popular by the sound of music. So I'm going to say name Edelweiss. It's a beautiful white flower. Flower that is quite a bit, seen quite a bit during the Christmas season. And I'm getting more German as the moments go by. Uh, Germany, you want to send me some citizenship papers? I so prepare. Papa, show me the the, the document. Your document, Hagen. Edelweiss. 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 Man, I can't wait to preach the gospel in German. I just can't. Wait. I'm itching for that to speak the gospel, the good spiel of God <laughs> in Dutch. With my dog's horn. <laughs> hey, guy, come on now. We're getting this done. Uh, act. There's not much more to this. Well, act means typical or authentic. Brother, you guys, watch out with me, boy. You guys better watch out there. Rosado is speaking dirt. Mm, the dirt. <laughs> we are uh, uh, speaking the God's uh, God's spell, God's spell in Dutch with my dog's hund. Oh man! Woo! Oh my leaving! I know that from the music, so I'm gonna get into that. Oh, Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! In Psalm in Leaven, my God is speaking the ghost, uh, go, God spiel, God spiel. <laughs> With my dark sword. My goodness, what have we done here? What has this world released? Ech. 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 Oh my goodness. It seems almost also as the German is it has texture to it, right? It has like this this rough texture. It's almost like a, a cloth that you, 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 you pass your hand. It has these very rough not a canvas. Canvas is still Right, but something even even rougher, maybe uh, a painting on a canvas that has like caked on paint, and you and you have that that rough. This is like German. That's what German is like. It has it has that texture in it. Um, it's it's just wonderful to hear it. It's it's rough because it's it's wonderful in its roughness. Not that it's beautiful like the romantic languages, like Spanish, um, uh, Italian, uh, French, for example, very much so, very milky, very smooth, especially when it's used in music. But the but uh, the German in its own right is very structured and textural, a textural um, interest, intrigue that the German has. And even in the movies, if you've seen any World War II movies, you have to admit, you know, when the Germans spoke German, 
uh, it, it was like serious, you know. <laughs> Uh, you can't imagine, like, making love to a German, you know, when they're speaking, like, in these movies. I mean, how could, I mean, what, are you going to kill me? Are you going to imprison me? Uh, you know, you just can't, you, it's hard to, you don't even, even growing up watching these war movies, you, you didn't know if you could trust a German or not, right? Because it was the way they spoke. And they're probably saying something silly and stupid, but you're like, you know, are, are we going somewhere in a train after this or whatever? You know, you just like, you gotta. <laughs> Either down, this refers to small, soft uh, feathers of a duck. Um, and we'll listen to that and see if we can get something on that. Either down. Either. Why did I do either? Either down. Either down. Either down. Ah. Ah. Either down. Either down. Karivina Haken. Achtung. Achtung. Ducks hund. Oh. Einkorn. Right? Einkorn is an ancient type of wheat. And you see here, this is also in the Bible. This is a grain. So this is an ein grain. It's what it is. The corn means grain. And the uh, corn was used by the English James Version of the Bible when... That shows the influence is deep. It goes back because the, the English word for grain was corn. So the German word, these are the more over there folks, they were just saying corn for grain. Corn. Corn. So the English used corn as well for grain. Then when they did the, trans the um, King James Version of the Bible, when the Bible referred to grain, they put corn because that was the word for grain but then now you come to today's time and everybody says, oh the bible's wrong it's, there was no corn growing in uh, the middle east corn doesn't grow in the middle east see how how smart i am i'm super super, super uh, smart and intelligent you guys who believe in the bible are ignorant um guess what you guys are ignorant uh <laughs> <laughs> it's just simply that old English grain is kern, and that's why you have kern and corn in the King James Bible. But realize that corn, the word corn, even in English, means grain. That's what the word means. So even calling corn corn means grain. You're calling it a grain. The Okay, so uh, again, people just think they know. Ersatz. Ersatz is what some might call a knockoff in that is a product that is created as an inferior substitute. Ersatz. Let's see how that one goes. And so again, this is not I here. It's not an R sats. So let's hear. Let's hear. This is just basically a fake. It's a not a. El sats. Fest. If you plan on going to a party celebration, you can tell everyone the word fest came from German. Like when it's used for the feasts of Oktoberfest and my, and my fast. Fest. We won't have to go to the German for that. Flack. Has anyone ever told you stop giving me flack? The actual German definition for this is in the air defense canon. But English folks say it when talking about criticism. Yeah, but we, they, I, I first learned flack from the war movie. I didn't learn it as being, you know, don't give me any flack. I, I learned it from 
that these this is what the uh, airplanes would, would give off to divert, you know, the missiles or whatever was the rockets sent. Um, after them aimed at them, they would send out flak, which would be other things on fire and whatnot, so that the heat signature would attract these rockets. And that was flak. <laughs> Well, that's what the way I took it. Now, let me look for the real definition of this. It's anti-aircraft fire. So the flak is actually the anti-aircraft fire. I always thought that flak was what yeah, what the ships, the uh, planes would throw out. What did they do? The countermeasures, right? I, I associated with flak, and then I, I switched it. So that was an, an error on my on my part. So I have been corrected. Let's get back on the correct track here. So flak is the actual firing on these uh, aircraft in the sky. See? That's a good thing about learning these things because then now you get to correct certain knowledge that you had before, but then uh, over time it has shifted. And that's a real interesting thing. You know, people got to get serious about, you know, what you're studying. Because you got to realize that uh, uh, after some time, you, you kind of forget certain things and things start shifting and melding. And uh, that's a real concern, especially if you're depending on what other people in old days wrote and said, you know. You got to think about things like this. I mean, how much is something that's you've been shifted a bit, you know? And especially when people are explaining about what what this is and what that is, how much of that knowledge has also shifted and changed over time? So these are things that you know you need to think about. These are real things that happen. These are real things that happen. Alrighty, so let me just see here. Yeah, these are real things that happen, people. Okay. Felspa. The Germans call this Felspot, but in English speaking world it's called Felspa and it's a type of rock that forms sixty percent of the world's crust. Feldspot. Fife. I five is a small high peach root. Uh, Fife is, uh, uh, we can look at this in musical history. Let me just look for this. Uh, let me look for Fife um, uh, uh, origination and see if it was originated in Germany. Here it says origin. It says German here. The Fife. Swiss German Pfeiffer, the Piper. So it says mid 16th century from German Pfeif, which meant pipe. Um, what nationality is Pfeif? And it says it's Scottish. This, the Scott, Pictish Scottish family was the first to use the name Pfeif. It is a name for someone who lived in the country of Pfeif, in the county of Pfeif, sorry. Um, so that was a county there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the origination of the uh, term for uh, the um, the pipe, the um, the instrument. Uh, again, they're going into the family name, but we want to know it in music. Fife in origination in music, music history. <laughs> The fife originated in medieval Europe and is often used in fife and drum corps, military units, and marching bands. Someone who plays the fife is called a fifer. The fife is a diatonically in tune instrument, commonly consisting of a tube with six finger holes and an embouchure and, and uh, hole that produces sound when blown across. Um, it doesn't say uh, when was the fife invented and where is what I was looking for. 
Fikes of, con of conical bore have also been made since 19th century, antedating the orchestral transverse flute. The fife is first attested in Europe d during the 12th century, which obviously brings in the Scottish uh, derivation. From the time of the Crusades, it has been played with cylindrical side drums as an infantry instrument, notably in Switzerland and Germany. So, so we can look more into that at another time. It's interesting. Uh, definitely, it seems to be somewhat Scottish, and it uh, closely, I guess, impacted on the on German, on the on German usage early on. Um, and when they say European, well, that includes the German as well, right? Gestalt, Gestalt is something we use a lot. Gestalt is a theory of the mind which is thought to have originated in Berlin. It refers to something that is more than the sum of its parts. Okay, so that's the gestalt. Is like after, like we, we're showing you certain parts, but there is a more that I'm getting, and hopefully you guys get, that is called the gestalt. Gestalt. Okay. And that, is, that means that we get more from just the part that we saw. Basically, I show you a part of that by looking for Fife in musical history, bringing in the musical part of that and looking at the history. So we're getting more than just like learning what Fife and how it's pronounced and stuff like that. We're getting actually more. Uh, and, but the gestalt is happening within a person. So that there's like something added, something inside is is attached and, and it becomes a greater thing than what was originally given and offered to them. That's the gestalt. Gotteldammerung. The, the rather fun. Go, go to, go, it's going to be a funny sounding. Good, a Gotteldammerung or something like that. It, um, it, the word is used to talk about catastrophic, uh, catastrophic event in English, but in German mythology, it marks the downfall of the, of the, of the god. So it's, it's Goethe, a Goethe Dameron. Goethe Dameron. Oh. So we're going to check on that. Uh, again, the word God, this word here, God, the double T, that's God. God, and this is damn, right? So it's the falling of the gods. And these are the, I guess, the plural, the ER would be the plural. In English, we use the yes. Gods, we th would think it was German, but it's Garten, which is more than one, right? Gotteldämmerung. <laughs> Gotteldämmerung. Gotteldämmerung. Rung. Hund. Da Dachshund. Gammerung. Gottel. Gotteldämmerung. Gotteldämmerung. Fantastic. Here we go. The, the Geden Kennerstand. Although you may just use the word experiment, know that a Geden, a Geden Ken experiment is a fine alternative in the English language. Yeah, you'll be fine. Oh, oh. Let's look at you funny. You're fine, all right. You, you're really fine. 
It's a getting can experiment. Although it doesn't tell you what it means. It has to tell you the getting can. It has to be something. I, you know, I don't like the way they do this. If, it's, if it was me, if I was writing that information, I would want people to know what the getting can is. Getting can experiment. Ah, the English translation is memory. So getting can is memory. Kadangin experiment. Kadangin experiment. experiment. Kadangin experiment. Kadangin experiment. experiment. So what I'm we're doing here is a language kadangin experiment. Uh -huh. Sit. Gedeng and experiment. Gedeng and experiment. experiment. So it looks like the K is like kind of weak with the N. It finishes it though. Gedeng. Gedeng and experiment. Gedeng and experiment. Now, well, in English, we would tend to hit that K strongly in this uh, pronunciation here. They seem to have a soft K. It's there. It's it just finishes the ink. Gedank and experiment. That's what we're doing now. And it's fine. Gelen sprung. Sprung. Gelen de sprung. From those skiing fans out there, this word is referring to a ski jump. Generally over an, an obstacle. Let's go there. Gelandesprung. 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 Uh, Germans is just so fun. Gesundheit. That we know. Don't you guys use that when someone is sneezing? Huh? You just say, God bless you? <laughs> Gesundheit. Fräulein. Ah. Gesundheit. This means bless you. And people in our language use it around the world. Gesundheit. Gestapo. You remember those guys? The Gestapo. Ah, this is an interesting word because although it simply means a police force in German, Gestapo has a negative connotation throughout the rest of the world because of how the World War II Gestapo led the way to a mass genocide. Gestapo. So it simply means police force. See? It simply means police force. Uh, what do they call the police in Germany today? It, it, they they don't call them Gestapo, of course. I mean, they couldn't use the word. See, Hitler messed it up. Hitler messed it up. He messed this planet up bad. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go into. Let's see. That's the German. Let's go uh, find. Uh, let me get another instance of this. Let me do this English here. And. Um, Let's have police. I think I see it's like police or something. Yeah, it, they do police. Let's see how it sounds. Police. 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 Don't you like Gestapo better? <laughs> um, police. And where is? Let me get the. It'll be. We do the etymology. I'm going to show you. Let's let's look at that. I haven't seen it. But you know me, we're going to look there. We're going to go there. I uh, go to eat him online. And I'm going to end it here, folks. It's getting late. But uh, I wanted to give that German show a shot. And we're going to do police. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to go... 
as early as possible to see where the thing came from. See polis. Uh, the regulation internal community, same word as policy, policia from the Latin, uh, ministry from Greek, polis. This is Greek origin. But you see, it doesn't talk about German because the German would be Gestapo. It wouldn't be police. They, they're using the police is from another language base. You understand? It's not German. Uh, it's uh, poli is Greek. It's Greek in origin, ancient Greek. Polis, Dolis, Citadel, Fort City, one city, the state. This is from um, the... Um, The um, I, I keep forgetting this when I see it, and then later in other times I just say it out. Indo-European, the peace stands for Persian Indo-European. Um, Tol or, or Pol is a citadel enclosed space, often on a high ground hilltop. Uh, in Sanskrit, this is very old stuff here. Uh, you have the Pol, Puram. Genitive Pura, city, citadel, and the and Lithuanian Pilis. So again, it's not German in origin. Has, no, you, seen, you haven't seen anything German yet. Yet, the Germans use a police, but it's polisai, uh, instead of their natural or innate in the German language, Gestapo which would have been the proper usage, except that Hitler messed things up. And so here you have it. <laughs> now, if the rest of the world can move on from its thing, because I, I, I understand, I understand, you know, I, I get it. But we have all these people, different nations. You know, I, I come, I, I, you say, you're Spanish, you don't understand. No, I'm Puerto Rican. And my island has been raped since they discovered it. Okay, my ancestors, the women, have been raped and abused, and we've been tortured and whatnot uh, since they discovered the island. Those who stayed there, obviously, because there's other groups that went down to the Amazon, but those who and, and spread out across the Caribbean and South America and Central South America, by the way, but to the up up Central, uh, yeah, Central Americas, and then right through the Amazon, uh, the uh, the Taino Indian went. That's where my ancestry comes from. But those who stayed in Puerto Rico, they were abused, they were raped continually, and uh, yeah, so they suffered as well. It wasn't no gas chambers on Puerto Rico or anything like that. But that's because it was like not something that you would do there. <laughs> but um, even the Puerto Ricans, they have these statues uh, commemorating or keeping that in the memory of the people of their uh, history of being abused and whatnot. And so you know, I, I so I do have an understanding of it. And uh, an appreciation of the way people feel and stuff like that. Um, and you have the American uh, uh, slave issue here and, and, and whatnot and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of these things especially, and we have a society full of stupid BS words, you know, that we call curse words that are really nothing. They don't mean anything. There's no power in them. Uh, it, I, when I was driving my son back, we were talking about the middle finger. I mean, why does a finger mean anything? Why do we continue uh, generation after generation after generation after generation after generation keep teaching children that the middle finger, which one is it? The middle finger, for lack of use, I don't know which one is, that this finger means something. He stuck my the middle finger up. I think that society wants to suffer, or someone's controlling. 
by making you be sensitive to things that have no meaning. Curse words that have no power. Fingers that have no meaning. If, if, if the middle finger means what it means, or whatever they say it means, then what am I doing to you now? You, This should destroy you, all of you. Look. Okay? Here you go. Here you go, all of you. In your face. Okay? You guys should be, oh, I turn off the internet. Unplug the internet. Burn it. You know, it's silly. Totally silly. Let's deal with the real stuff. Let's deal with the real evil. You understand? And it's like the swastika. A lot of people find it offensive and all of that. But, you know, if you look at the swastika existed before Hitler used it. And it wasn't bad. I think, you know, the, the people need to... You guys need to... Well, let's deal with evil, not with... Things that evil people do, and then all of a sudden, that thing is no good. The thing is no good. What happened to the people? What happens to the real evil, like the real racism? We're just going to condemn, you know, this. Like the American uh, blacks, they call each other the N-word, yet if, if another person of another race calls says an N-word to any of them, You know, so it seems crazy, and I should really put this in, an, in a separate broadcast, but I'm going to end it with this. It seems crazy that it, it looks like someone's trying to control things and, and keep at least blacks calling each other the N-word. Why are you doing that? If the N-word means something, then why are blacks using it against each other? You know, and they, they don't use it like in a negative. Oh, but they're not using it negative. It's like friendly. No, no, friends. No, no, friends. If It's like saying the middle finger means something, but not between us. So we can go around giving the middle finger to each other. But yet, in the rest of the world, it means something. So aren't you really giving each other the finger? And isn't it really that each of your brothers are calling each other ends? And, and continuing that that um, offense going on internally, and you're laughing it off on the outside, but it's it's still an offense inside. It's still that's your place. That's your place. So hey, we know it, but we don't gonna let anyone else uh, remind us. Doesn't make any sense, folks. So I think we need to mature ourselves, you know, and let the Germans call their police Gestapo. It's simple. That's their language. And let's move on. <laughs> I know I'm going to get a lot of hate, hate mail for that, but it's, it's just stupid. It's just really stupid at this point. Let's move on. Let's have some sense. Let's get into education. Let's move on to other things. This Hitler business and Nazis and all that, that's done. It's gone by. Just because you say Gestapo is not going to re-bring back Hitler. It won't do that. Hitler will come back. There will be another Hitler. Okay? Either way. you're not Gestapo, using the word Gestapo is not going to bring him back. But keep hiding the facts and not dealing with the reality. That's what's going to bring him back. So you're going to have to deal with that. You heard it from me and wait. Because it's going to happen. When it happens, you realize, you know, the guy was right. I'll be gone by then. But anyway, I said it. Take care. Good night. I'm going to have dinner. See you later. I may come back on with Space Parium. After that, we may be or not. Because I'm really tired right now. But anyway, let's get on. Have a good night. And see you guys next time.